uh, please turn, we'll jump right to Nehemiah. We're starting, last week we started Ezra. Next week, Adam Ashita will be here. And then the next week, I've asked, remember that Titus is going to do every third, every third Wednesday night doing the book of Jude. So it'll be a little while before we get back to Ezra. But um, I mentioned that one of my old commentaries, I don't know who, are they, uh, it's a compilation of all these different preachers that comment on different passages of scripture. And some preacher on his high horse, and this is 1901 that this commentary was put together. And he was talking about uh, Ezra was so bold that um, he was too he was too bold and uh, too strong and I don't know where he gets that. Um, I think that definitely Ezra is given to us as an example of a strong strong faith and. It is pretty amazing how Ezra was just unwavering. He's unwavering. James talks about, you know, those that just like, they're they're wavering, like waves cast on the sea. Um, You could tell when you read through Ezra, this man is not double-minded. He is a great spiritual leader, and he loves God's word. And he's going to stick to God's word. He's going to present it in such a way uh, that he's telling the people they need to be doers of the word. It's clear that Ezra was a doer of the word. And he was not in any way double-minded. And maybe the commentator I was reading, maybe he was... Uh, getting swept up uh, with higher criticism or uh, I don't know why he would criticize Ezra that um, just that Ezra is such a great example. Ezra saw things black and white and uh, preached the word so strong and Ezra was, he's a scribe, he was a scribe, he knew God's word and uh, Jewish tradition says that it was Ezra that formed the Old Testament canon, was a leader in bringing the Old Testament canon together. And it was Ezra that was so strong on, well, if you look in, in oh, what's the, in, uh, back, look back in Ezra, we, we mentioned this verse last week, in our introduction to the book of Ezra, but in Ezra chapter 7, we said there's two key verses to the book of Ezra, and the first key verse was Ezra chapter 1, verse 3. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel, He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And um, Ezra focusing on, the first half of Ezra is focusing on the restoration of the temple of God. There's uh, there's 49,000 Jews that come back to Jerusalem and uh, God leading them to build the temple. And then the second half of Ezra Um, beginning in chapter 7, going to the end of the book, is uh, Reformation of the People led under Ezra, and he preaches hard. Oh, he, uh, whoa, um, just a strong, strong leader. But in Ezra uh, Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, it says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. Like we say, he's a, he was just a doer of the word, and he expected God's people to be doers of the word. You'll notice that as, you, as we go through the book. He says, 
He prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. So Ezra is credited in Jewish history as um, bringing the Old Testament scriptures, he had the form in the canon, but he's also, uh, it says that he was such a strong teacher that he was the, like, uh, founding father of synagogues, the synagogue, the system of synagogues, where what did they do in the synagogue? They would stand up and read the scriptures. Remember uh, Jesus' first message? He goes into the synagogue. All the eyes of the people are focused on him. And he reads Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he, he, what Jesus is doing is claiming to be the Messiah, the, the Savior that's promised in the Old Testament. All the eyes of the people were upon him. And so what they would do, the synagogues were all about reading Scripture and studying Scripture. And Ezra, at least what I read, Ezra was credited as being an influence in starting that to get communities get towns all around um, to study in God's word. So, so, because we know that the synagogue phased out because the church is centered on Christ and we worship the Lord Jesus. So, the synagogue, actually Jews persecuted uh, early Christians so, just want to look at an example. Last week we said that before we start going verse by verse, we did look at uh, Ezra chapter 1 and just how, it, uh, how God gives history. And we looked at some true elements of history. And, you know, the world doesn't, they, the world, you, know, you can go to the highest university and in the country, and you will not get a proper view of history. You could you could get a doctorate in history from uh, probably pick about any any college or university across the United States, but if they don't give it from God's view, it's going to be a skewed, twisted, wrong view of history. And I just like how. Ezra, because he's considered, uh, he was considered a historian. He's writing uh, about the history of Israel and the people coming back to the land. And so uh, Ezra, because God is telling him what to write, and all the history of that day and that time, just like when God gives all the history of that day and that whatever period it was, it all revolves around God. And you can't even properly study like the World War II without a interpretation, a view of like, okay, what did these people think about God? What did Hitler think about God? But uh, the teaching kids today, they're totally ignoring they don't give a proper teaching of history. So, but anyway, we said this week we're going to, uh, before we start the book of Ezra further and start going through verse by verse, this is a wonderful um, view of Ezra and how powerful he was and how uh, he loved God's word and uh, led the people in, in Ezra chapter 8 and uh, Ezra chapter 8. Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8. Remember, we said that Nehemiah is sometimes also called Second Ezra because it does continue the history. It's the third. Uh, Nehemiah is the third return to Jerusalem. And the in first return was under Zerubbabel. And that's what you see the first half of Ezra. 
And then you have the second half of Ezra. There's about, what is it, 14, 1500. We'll, we'll, when we get there, uh, we'll read it. That come back, uh, come back to Jerusalem. But Ezra's leading in getting the people spiritually on track. Um, but then you have this other group in, in Nehemiah that comes, and they're going to build the wall up, the wall up. So, so sometimes, because it's, it's just continuing the history, is that Nehemiah is some kind of second Ezra, because it's falling right along. And remember that if you read the last verses, the very last verses of Second Chronicles, and then you read the very first verses of Ezra, it is right on, exactly on track, picking up right there and continuing. So anyway, we got to get going. Want to see... Uh, I'll just read down through and comment in, as in Nehemiah chapter 8 and how uh, Ezra presented the word of God to God's people. And let's pray before we read down through here. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless your word. Uh, help us to learn from Ezra how he loved your word and taught your word and uh, just was unwavering and uh, single-hearted, not double-minded, and uh, just stress being doers of the word. And uh, thank you for this passage. It shows such respect for your word. Pray that you would bless it tonight. Pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us. Pray that you would help me as I go over this passage. In Jesus' name. Amen. So in Nehemiah chapter 8, it says, All the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And that all the people gathered, it's a wonderful thing when, even on Sunday morning, when all God's people are faithful and gather together to hear the word of God. I think it's a beautiful picture. They gather at the water gate. Uh, because God's, wa God's word is like water. Um, it's like a fountain that we come to and drink of. That they gather as one man. Uh, you know, the epistles talk about the church being, uh, you know, one. One, and we all uh, to agree on the scriptures. And it says, They spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And so uh, I've got a bunch of R's in this passage. There's this readiness. There's this readiness to drink up God's word. The people want Ezra to bring the word. And a lot of modern churches today don't want that. You've got 45 minutes of... of uh, concert... And then 10 or 15 minutes tacked on the end. And then it's like, you know, that's almost like too bad we had to put that in there. I remember 30, 33 years ago, we were, uh, first, our first year of marriage, we were at a church where um, they were like... Um, Oh no! There's just this is always like oh now we gotta listen to the pastor preach, and here's just a great readiness, a great readiness to hear the word of God. They want the word of God, and the word of God in verse two is presented with reason. With reason, it says in Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both the men and women. And all that could hear with understanding. And all through this chapter, it is uh, stressed to have understanding of God's word. Uh, you see, understanding is mentioned in verse 2, verse 3, verse 7, verse 8, verse 12, verse 13. And 
Everything's to be done with understanding. And in 1 Corinthians, oh, is it 14, where uh, Paul stresses, he's talking about them speaking in tongues and saying he'd rather speak five words with understanding than 10,000 words without understanding. And that chapter also stresses God wants us to understand, understand. And so Ezra presents the word of God to his men and women, and then all that could under, uh, could hear with understanding. Maybe they had a nursery for the little ones, but anybody that could, they could reason uh, concerning God's word, they were all gathered together. Verse 3, and he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. That would, wouldn't go over very well today. We're just going to get together this morning and read till noontime. Uh, you can get together. I'm not. Can you imagine? They just read. They just read. And so there's a reading of God's word. And that, I would think, uh, stressing for uh, people to just know all they can of what God's word says and to hear it and to soak it in a reading. So there's a readiness, uh, there's reason, reasoning, there's reading. And it says, And all the people, the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Just being attentive, uh, parents ought to be on top of if the kids aren't paying attention. God wants all ears to be listening when God's word is taught. And that doesn't always happen. Verse 4, And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. So here's a great, there's a great respect for God's word. <clears throat> there's another R. Uh, great respect for God's word <clears throat> in that. All the people are paying attention. All the ears of all the people are attentive. But also that they made this pulpit of wood, especially for the preaching of God's word. And it just showed great respect. And then that these men stood beside Ezra on the right hand and on the left while he was reading the word of God. That's amazing. That's just like uh, they're reinforcing we agree with God's word. We stand beside Ezra, giving God's word. These men, they all stand, and you can read the list uh, of the men on the right hand and on the left hand, and just shows the great respect for God's word. Also, I believe it shows like a reinforcement. There's another R, reinforcement, for them to stand beside the man of God as he's reading the word of God. Is that reinforcement? We agree with this. We love the Bible. We respect the Bible. Uh, we're willing to stand up for the Bible. And verse 5 says, Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was far above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up, just showing more respect for the word of God. They all stand when it was read. And Ezra blessed the Lord the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Because Amen, Amen means so be it, so be it. They're just agreeing with God's word. Lifting up their hands was a, it wasn't receiving the spirit like you see Pentecostals do. It was, it was a sign of surrender. We are going to obey God's word, and they worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. So there's a great response, a great response to God's word here. That's another R, a great response. And so it meant verse 7 also, Jeshua, and you read, read all those names, it says, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law. Parents ought to, you know, after 
church said, did you understand that? Do you know what that was? You know what that was all about? God wants, God wants understanding. And it just amazes me, as it probably, I'm sure it amazes all of us, how many kids will sit in church till they're 16, 17, 18 years old and never really understand salvation. They must not because there's no, they just walk away and never come back. And so the preaching of God's word it is to be understanding is to be stressed and so uh, they caused the people to understand the law and the people stood in their place and verse 8 so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading and we will stop right there so just shows though how as we go through the book of Ezra, this man had a love and respect for God's word, and he knew God's word, and you can't help somebody to understand it if you don't understand it yourself. He had a great understanding of God's word, and you'll see as we go through Ezra, he, he was definitely uh, wanting the people to be doers of the word.